Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan Samsel, and today we're going to be talking about Docker Basics. I know there's a lot of information out there uh, in YouTube videos or on the Docker, you know, documentation website, uh, and, and plenty of tutorials about Docker and how it works, you know, the fundamentals, but sometimes that information really isn't presented in an accessible way that's, you know, understood by people easily. So I'm going to cover some of the basics today, and then I'm going to give you an analogy that really helps me to remember and understand how it works. Uh, so if you're interested in how Docker is just like Starbucks, this video is probably for you. So let's get right to the Docker basics itself. Uh, I've got a slide here I'd like to go over with you. Um, there's pretty much four main topics that are the core of Docker and its use uh, that we're going to, just going to talk about real quick. One is image, uh, second is repository, container, and volumes. Those terms you're going to hear uh, or read no matter what source of information you're trying to look for, and they're really the, the, the most basic uh, core information that you need in order to get using Docker and to kind of understand how it works. Uh, so as you can see, an, an image itself, uh, it's a static file that's uh, created with all of the different components and, and code that's needed to run the application that's uh, that you're trying to run uh, and that they create those usually with a docker file um, so the docker file is just a text file and it's uh, you know I call it the recipe here uh, it's basically got instructions on what uh, you know is going to be going on under the hood what code you're going to be running and then they compile all of that together and it's a static image and uh, you know an example there I actually created my first image uh, a couple of weeks ago and I'll do a separate video on that but um, that's what it looks like uh, on the, the docker hub or in the repository the first part there is the owner or who created it you've got a slash and then the name of the actual application uh, and then the colon uh, will uh, you can use uh, a lot of time is latest is is will get you the very latest version of it depending on how things are tagged my particular one I don't have a latest tag on there I just have this version 2.0 uh, to separate uh, the it from the version 1.0 that I created at first that didn't quite work right um, but that's uh, basically how you'll find it in a repository and again that repository uh, is a key word you're gonna hear that one a lot as well you can either have a public repository or a private repository so if you've got a private repository, you can host that locally yourself, or you can actually have it on Docker Hub, which is, um, you know, if you have an account on there, you can have a private location on there, or you can make them publicly accessible as well. But Docker Hub is pretty much the biggest host of, of all of the images that's out there right now. But, uh, you know, even if you're a company, you may want to host your own, and uh, or, or if you're just... Uh, building your own code at home, you may want to host your own repository. But that, that's basically, you know, where they're all stored, all the images themselves. So for containers, um, that's where the magic is happening. The containers are, when you spin them up, they're the running instance of an actual image. You can have multiple containers spun up based off of a single image. So those can be individual running versions doing the same program for a slightly different purpose. Um, and, and one of the things that you'll see out there uh, when you're researching Docker is using Docker Compose. If you want to uh, orchestrate spinning up simultaneously, you know, or rather it, it really happens one by one, but it's so fast it seems like it's simultaneous, you create a text file uh, it's a, a YAML file, YML, and you use Docker Compose to essentially, you know, start um, application number one, application number two, application number three, all of them with all of the different variables and settings that you need, and they all get spun up at one time with, with one code. So that can actually save you a lot of time if you are trying to start a, a lot of different containers simultaneously is is kind of handy but it, it just depends on your use case now when it comes to volumes you've got three different options uh, for creating a or spinning up a container if you don't designate uh, in in the flags a dash v 
and, and then either a Docker volume or a bind mount. If you don't do any of those things, Docker will create a, basically a, an, an auto-created uh, you know, file storage for the container that you're using so that it can save any of the config files and things like that that the application actually needs to run. But that data that's in that auto-created volume, it won't survive if you actually uh, delete a container and you know pull down a new image and then spin up a container with with any updates that are in the latest version of the application all of your config information is going to be gone at that point well that's where docker volumes come in uh, it's a very simple command docker volume create and then you give it a name and then docker actually has a a folder uh, storage location where it places those uh, basically uh, file folders and then when you spin up a container, you use uh, dash V, and then you actually use that name, and then a colon, and then the location inside of the container where that information is going to be mirrored so that you can more easily uh, access uh, your config files. And when you uh, kill a container and, and bring in a new one, you know, as soon as you spin up that new uh, container, it will and you use that same volume uh, flag, the Docker volume, your configuration files will be there so that you won't have to go through the initial turn on, you know, wizard for a certain application and, you know, tell it where your source files are and, you know, whatever the, the config is, all of that will be saved. So uh, the difference between a Docker volume and a bind mount is that a bind mount is a location that is on your host machine where Docker is being run, but it's not in the, you know, it's not a Docker volume. It's just a file folder. It can be in your home, um, you know, it can be in your desktop, wherever. And you specify that exact location also with the dash V uh, flag when you spin up a container. But, you know, it will persist and your data will be there and, and Docker will never, you know, delete that information like it will with the auto created volume. So very important uh, to understand the differences between the volumes, the different types of volumes that are used in Docker. And uh, one of the things for this, this entire Docker basics that I like to, to use is an analogy that Docker is like Starbucks. So <laughs> I know that Docker, they have their own uh, analogy that they like to use, uh, containers being put on a ship, uh, yada, yada. It's, it does work, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, when I think of Starbucks, I think of images are like black coffee, right? Um, that's the core of, of how and what it is that Starbucks is selling and what you really want is coffee. Now, not all coffee is the same. All, the black coffee itself can be made from different beans. You can have dark roast, light roast, you know, Sumatran beans, whatever. Um, the, those different combinations are equivalent to the different types of, of images that you can use. Uh, so the repository, you can either, you know, buy a bag of Starbucks uh, uh, coffee and come home and brew it yourself. That's a self-hosted repository uh, or, or a private repository. Uh, a public repository is essentially going to Starbucks to, to buy your cup of coffee. You're going to go and you're going to pull an image down and you're going to build from that. So when it comes to containers, you know, that's, that's your different... Uh, you know, it's, it's all coffee under the hood, uh, but what goes in your cup, if it's, you know, vanilla versus uh, half and half and with cinnamon on top, you know, whatever the, the different variations and variables of, of how you like your coffee, that's what uh, containers are. And, and the volumes piece of this um, is, you know, if you had an office and you had an assistant who you send out with a list of everybody's coffee order, um, for the, the auto uh, container uh, volumes, that's like sending a new assistant every single time. They're going to get it right. I mean, they'll get everybody's order. They'll, you know, find the nearest Starbucks. They'll, they'll get it done. But each time you go for a coffee run, the, it's going to be a new assistant. So they won't remember any of that. So um, I know it's a rough analogy, but it does work. So... But that same assistant, if you send the same assistant each time, you know, they're going to remember some of these things and they're going to be able to replicate that without, 
um, you know, forgetting any information about, you know, people's coffee orders and, and what they want. So to me, um, that analogy of, of Docker is, is like Starbucks or getting a, cu a cup of uh, coffee. That's, you know, the easiest way for me to remember how it works. Uh, I hope that was informational uh, to, to some people. Uh, again, I know a lot of it's already out there, but this is the easiest way for me to remember it, and I hope it helped somebody. So if you liked the video, uh, you know, uh, throw me a comment below and, and subscribe if you would. Uh, and uh, everybody, have a good one. Shining up above